Today I thought I'd make an in-person intro into this video. I'm going to change this simple data set into this cool looking Sankey chart. I find that most content that I've seen, whether it be on training courses or online videos, primarily focuses on finance, commerce and transactional data. But to me, that's not the field of work that I uh, work in. I try to look at other types of input content that I can use and how I can apply that to visualization and summary of the data that I can present either in my work or just to other people online. Some of those other real world situations could be things like construction, the legal world, things in like document management, communications, etc. So I'm going to look at one of those today that can maybe be applied to things like construction, insurance, legal world, many, many other aspects. And that's risk management and risk assessment. So I'm going to show you how you can change a simple risk assessment register into something that you can summarize and visually present it to give you an overall feel of how you went from whatever your raw risk is to whatever your mitigated risk is. And we're going to use a Sankey chart because I feel that's a good tool to use to represent that flow of data. So the main DAX that I will use in Power BI today will be summarized columns. Summarized columns will allow us to manipulate our data set and change that into the three columns that we need to create a Sankey chart. Stay tuned if you want to see me walk through this. If you like this content, comment below. Let me know what you think. If you want to give me a like and a subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, let's get to it. So just to introduce the Sankey chart, the Sankey chart is a useful uh, tool to summarize any data where there may be a process or a journey being followed for a data point. So Sankey will effectively group each source against its destination and then create the various levels from that. Therefore, it is important that the values in each level are not duplicating those in the previous level. Otherwise, they will combine. For example, in the risk assessment, if we simply use high, medium and low for both the raw risk and the mitigated MIC uh, risk, it'll just combine those into a single single level. Therefore, we have to make some sort of differentiation in the names. So what we're using is like a prefix, like a R level for raw risk level or an M level for a mitigated risk level. So here we have the risk assessment uh, risk register. So it's a simple register noting the risk IDs maybe a department, a description of the raw risk, looking at the likelihood and consequence scores. And then what if we have a mitigation, we look at the likelihood and consequence. So we're using this typical matrix that you'll see for risk management. Here are the risk uh, matrices. This is a summary of it. So we're looking here at the raw risk. So what, what are the possible combinations and what that corresponds to? Similar for mitigated, we look at the the combinations and what it corresponds to your low, medium, high, or extreme risk. Then next, we'll have a look at importing the data that we're going to use. So we're going to import the matrices and the register itself. So here is the risk register. And what we're going to do is do a couple of custom columns here to combine the raw likelihood and consequence score. So we'll just do a simple um, concatenate or merge columns. So we're going to have a prefix of R for raw, and then we're going to combine the likelihood score and then the consequence score with just a hyphen in the middle. So for the for the consequence score, because we're using a number, we have to convert that to text, otherwise we'll get an error. So we're using here in M code text dot from, so that uh, converts that number to a text format. So we click OK. We'll see here we've created a column for our raw likelihood consequence score. We'll do one more for our mitigation. So similarly, again, we'll call this 
mitigated LC for likelihood and consequence. So we'll combine these. We'll use the prefix of M here for mitigated. And again, we'll just concatenate or join these um, values from each column. So the likelihood and then convert the consequence to a text with a hyphen in the middle. And that should be done. So we click OK here. And so we've got those two columns. So we can now link those to our lookup matrices that we have. So that's our finished one. So if we go to raw risk, we have that score, which we think can then correspond to an overall rating. And the same for mitigated, we have a rating. So this is what it looks like in the model. We have our risk assessment plus the two matrices. So next, what we do is we create just the calculation, just to count the number of risks. We'll use this for our weighting purposes. Um, so next, we're going to look on. We're going to move on to creating our summarized um, columns table. So we simply call this summarized table. And what we're going to do here is use summarized columns. So we're going to take the raw risk rating, what we have, and then match that with our mitigated risk rating. And then what we're going to do is add an additional sort of almost custom column. So it's going to be um, the number of risks. So I just need to rename this because I don't want to call it the same as the other. So I'll just use the word number of risks. And then we'll call it our expression for the number of risks. So that's, we'll see how, how, what that turns out like. So we do that and we create this table. So we have our raw risk rating, our mitigated risk rating. So what we've moved to and from on each, um, each line item, and then the number of risks associated with each of those movements. So if we're going from extreme to high, how many do we have? So if we want to look at that in a table format, what that looks like. So it's just a simple matrix. And if we want to have a quick look at how that would look as a single level Sankey, we'll drop in our source, which is our raw rating, and then our destination, which is our mitigated rating. And then we drop in our weighting, which is our number of risks. So that gives us what that looks like. So if we want to just, um, simply reorder these because it doesn't come out simply in the extreme to low on both sides so just a quick reorientation of that and it gives you an idea of how visually it looks even though we haven't colored it properly or made it look nice yet as yet so if we want to go and then add another level what we want to do is effectively create another summarized columns, but we want to union them together. So we want to we want to bring in what what is the action that's required from our mitigated risk. So we copy our summarized columns here, and then what we want to do is union those two tables together. So we'll put in a simple union in brackets and drop down our initial summarize columns table and then we'll add a second columns table so we'll basically paste that in and then we'll change our raw risk rating to our mitigated risk rating so that's what it was that was our previous destination now it becomes the source effectively and then our destination now is you know what's the action what's the risk ac action what do we need to do and we still keep the number of risks so if we hit return that on there, hopefully that will return our single table. So you see, we, we still still keep three columns, but below we have three further line items looking at the no action, director approval, and board approval. Although the, the, the titles of the columns are a bit misleading. Um, um, 
we'll see how this sort of pans out here. So we put in our sources and destinations. We need to just sort of jig this about a little bit here. So we bring our first level over to the middle. Just reorder these a little bit. And then we'll add in our weighting. Not starting to look a bit better. So again, we'll just rejig this. This sank in Power BI. It's a little bit manual in terms of how you have to organize it, but it's good that you can drag and things across the place. And it's pretty customizable. So if you want to customize the colors of the connections and the source and destinations, etc., we can do that through our format um, visual. I don't want to do that all here, but I'll just show you one. So if you color that red. So if we then apply that to everything, this is what it looks like. And if we want to take it up next additional level, we can look at adding in a couple of customized calculations. So here, what we're doing effectively is using that summarized columns to give us a particular number. So if we want to look at what are the mitigated risks that are medium. So we're using a calculate number of risks and then we're filtering by the summarized columns. And just that coalesce is in case we have a zero, it doesn't return a blank. I can put these um, calculations in a blog separately if someone needs them. Um, so this is just reassigning all the colors so we get go from a red for extreme down to green for low, give us almost like a traffic light. If we want to take it up to another level, we can create separate um, reports that basically give you details of each risk. So that was the not acceptable one. And you know we can bring it back. If we want to look at what's board approval, we got two risks that require board approval, so we can have further detail if we, someone wants to drill and have a look at them. Um, again, we can do this for whatever the director approval risks are, and no action. So if we have them, so someone can actually come in and have a look at them in more detail. Um, so the the Sangi gives you the overall visual. You can have a feel of how things are going and the numbers. And if you want to drill down, you have the option to do that. So kind of in summary, what we've done is we have changed this simple data set, manipulated it to create a summarized set of columns, which then translates into this pretty nice looking Sankey chart with some customizable buttons or um, cards that we have. And we can link that into uh, detailed reports. If you like what you've seen here, uh, as I said at the, at the beginning, you can give me a like or a subscribe or a comment below if you want to see this or similar content or if you have any questions or feedback just let me know i'm happy to hear it okay that's me see you later bye